Hello and welcome to an overview of round seven here in the Mimic uh, Stukent Mimic Pro, I guess you would call it a sim turn ship, as they say now. And we're going to take a quick look here today at round seven, the keys that go into it and how to uh, put yourself in the best position to succeed. Now, before we get too much further, just a couple of quick notes. One, um, I am jumping right to round seven. I have not done the other rounds. I'm trying to keep this specifically about the shopping ads that come with round seven. Two, uh, this is meant to be more informational. This is not like a cheat. I guess it's a cheat sheet, but it's more about just the things that you need to focus on. Um, I have run through this round probably 10 times now in the last three days. And my goal as an instructor and as someone who knows what's going on in the back end, I, I'm trying to get the full points here through just one round in one campaign. It can be very difficult to do. And I found this one pretty hard um, myself. So I got close, but um, it's, there's certainly a lot of uh, different variables that go into this. Now I'm going to do my best to explain them, make sure that, you know, you can uh, make your way through it and put yourself in a good position. But again, this is just shopping. Um, because I am an admin, I'm able to jump right up to round seven. So when you start this, the they'll mention that the goal is $20,000 in revenue between all the campaigns. Now that includes display ads and search ads, which you had done for the six rounds prior. Now, as you go through, you know, you watch the video, you look at the inbox, everything like that. Something to keep an eye on or to think about is that bidding for shopping ads is a little bit different. Actually, the process here is very different than what you've had so far. Um, for one, there are no ads to create. Um, and honestly, there's not a ton of work that you need to do with the um, customer profiles like you have previously. This is a little bit different. And what I mean by that is you don't need to prepare specifically for one of the personas. I mean, you can, um, and maybe that's the, the secret ingredient that kept me from really getting to that, that key number of uh, key revenue, but really it's about how shopping ads work, the way that it's bid a little bit differently and the way that product groups are created. Now I'm going to jump right up here to the merchant product center. I look at this and you're going to see all the products that are available. You have all the same lines as before. The American Dream, the Legacy, the OG, and the Switch. There's nothing to actually do here. This is really just for your information. Keep an eye in particular on the price and kind of where they all fall, like what the products are. At this point, you're expected to be familiar with the products how they exist, um, and the general pricing for them. Because bidding here is going to be a lot more important than it has been so far. Next, you're going to go up to campaigns. You're already going to see your existing campaigns here from search and display. And you're really just going to add a new shopping campaign. And I've already created one. What you'll do, you'll go in and you will add one. I think it only lets you create one specifically for um, the actual shopping. So I'll go ahead and um, I think if I pause it, it'll let me create a new one. So you're going to go in, you're going to create create a shopping ad. With, and you're going to, your goal once again, sales, you are graded on revenue here. That is the number one grade. And... It says in the introduction that you're looking for $20,000. You're not actually going to be you know, held to quite that much. It's a little bit less than that. So if you get close to 20 grand, uh, the sim, sim internship will grade you accordingly. Um, different instructors are going to grade this differently. I usually just go with what uh, the Mimic program tells me. And so you're actually looking to get closer to about $18,000. Usually on this, I'll just call it the shopping ad. Now, your daily budget is a function of what's remaining. Um, you have more budget now than you did previously. 
the one thing to think about is if your display and search ads are doing well and you've been doing well overall in this uh, in the past couple of rounds, I don't recommend taking away any dollars from what you've spent already. If you have you know seven thousand dollars tied up in display ads and you've been doing really well with revenue, don't don't change it. Keep it. Just use the new budget that's left. It, the daily budget will be calculated automatically for you. So I haven't used anything. If I can go, you know, I can go up to 495, I believe is the daily limit because I haven't spent anything. So I'll go right up to the max. Now your default cost per click, again, as you've seen so far that you can change this. I would recommend a default cost per click of closer to $2 rather than $1 as you might've done previously. Now you can create ad groups. So the idea here is you're only gonna create one campaign for shopping. You can create different ad groups though. Um, ad groups are gonna be, you can decide, I mean, really ad groups have their own product groups, which then have keywords, but you can also select keywords for the ad groups. Um, I usually just create ad groups based on the products that I'm gonna be promoting in each one. So here, um, I'm just going to call this, we'll start with um, the backpacks. Now, again, I usually will stick with the $2 cost per click. Now I have product groups. So before we give it a name and a cost per click, I want to show how this works. Um, for shopping ads, you're working off of three groups. They're, and they're, they're different um different ways that all of the products are grouped together. One, the easy one is pricing. There's a product group that's for things that are just $65 or more. And then there's a product group for products that are less than $65. It gives you a historic cost per click, which is kind of what it's gone for in the past and what you are willing to bid for it up to, you know, what the maximum is. You also have it available for product lines. So those are the American dream, the legacy, the OG and the switch. Again, they have historic cost per clicks. And then you have types. You have backpacks, duffel bags, messenger bags, totes, and travel bags. Once again, historic cost per clicks, and there's a pretty wide range. Um, what I have found the most success with is, honestly, you know, there's a lot of overlap, actually, to start, to take a step back. If you have an ad group for backpacks, right, for... Um, for act for if you were just to select this one for example and you put a cost per click of you know that's, we'll just go with the historic cost per click that includes the american dream backpack the legacy backpack the og backpack but then if you were to also go with price range and you go 65 dollars or more and you put it in for the historic cost per click once again that's going to include a cup all of the backpacks that are over 65 dollars. so there's going to be an overlap there I just say this because after the round is over and you look at your results, you may see, you know, just know that like a backpack might not actually go for 237 uh, cost per click. It might go for some like the average of what you set for those two different groups. Anyways, a couple of notes here. For one, I'm going to go back to product lines. I personally am trying to get the best bang for my buck. So if we actually go to types, you're going to see these are your best deals here. Um, I certainly do not recommend doing anything that's at $4 um, in terms of cost per click. I, I completely ignore this. Um, and you can select multiple and, you know, you could technically select them all. I usually just go for these three. So we'll call this the you know product types. Um, product group. And this is, you do need, make sure that you put a name here because you're going to, you get confused when you look at them all at the end. Um, for the max cost per click, I usually just go a little bit over the historic cost per click. Um, I definitely don't recommend going much below. If you go too far below, you're going to get um, a lot of clicks that do not convert. And the key here is that we are trying to maximize the people who click through to get them to convert and make a purchase. I usually will go kind of similar to what before, what we had talked about in the um, search ads. So you can go a little bit higher. I'll go, I think up 
I, I'll go up to like 20 cents more. I think I had the most success when I was about 190 there. Um, duffel bags, you can go higher as well. I haven't had a ton of luck here with the duffel bags in the past. Messenger bags, same deal. Um, you know, go higher. You can go higher too. I did, I exper when I've experimented some different things, I've seen some, you know, varying degrees of success. You could go way higher if you really wanted to. Cause, um, I actually, in all the times I've run this, I haven't actually exhausted my budget. Um, part of it might just be because I didn't have the other types of ads, but that showed me that I probably could have gone higher on cost per click. And I never went more than 20 or 30 cents. So Again, you have multiple rounds here to work with. It's okay if you want to try something higher. Um, I wouldn't go too high, you know, for the heck of it. You could just put, for the sake of experimenting, you could go one of them like way higher and just say, like I said, like 250 or something. Um, you do need a default cost per click. Once you have those, go ahead and create the product group. And then it goes to negative keywords. The bidding strategy with shopping ads is that you need to select keywords that you do not want people to search and see your product for. This is where we think about search intent. When people are looking to buy something on Google, they're going to include terms like buy or sale um, or discount. Words like that signify that the searcher is looking to make a purchase. Things that you wouldn't put in a search if you're looking to buy is more of the um, informational words. And th that's called an informational search where say you are like a how to or where what essentially asking questions. And I personally, you know, I'm not going to um, I do want to, you know, see this through here. But what you'd look for is a keyword here. Um, it's like. I, I don't know, we'll say how to, um, you know, keywords like this. How do you dispose of backpacks? Okay, I think that counts. How to use the headphone port. I don't think people are looking to make a purchase. Um, how to restring a drawstring. I don't think people are looking for that either. Elements like that are what you're looking for. Um, I'm going to come back to this because you'll notice that I have these words on a list, but you know, we'll go with that. Now... One thing I do want to, what I would recommend doing is after you create a campaign, you go through the, the list. Um, I would recommend doing a little bit more research on the keywords. Back up here at keyword research and planning, you can do this. Now, I have spent a lot of time building out a list. I call this the how-to list. It's ended up being a lot more. What I did is I went through and I looked for those informational searches, things like how-to. Things like things that are essentially questions. A lot of them are not going to relate even at all to your products. But again, there's a lot of keywords here, and and I went the, with those that have a lot of monthly searches. Additionally, I went in and searched for some other brand names. If you're looking for a Swiss backpack and you see a Bowie backpack, um, that person's probably not going to make a purchase. You might sneak one in. But if you look at, if say you you know you get ten thousand impressions and you get five hundred clicks, what one of them might turn into a purchase, and at that point it is not worth uh, the the return. You know you have a a negative return on ad spend there. So another thing to do is look at some other questions. How to, you know how how should a day pack fit? How to measure a backpack? Things like that. People aren't making aren't looking to buy something. They have questions. Then the other thing that to think about here are the really broad searches. Um, if I go back here to the search and I just search the word buoy, for example, that's got 22,000 searches. There's high competition. It's a pretty pricey keyword. That is a good negative keyword to include. There is a very small chance that when somebody searches buoy that they're looking to buy exactly the product that you're selling. In that case, I recommend just eliminating it entirely. I also would recommend buoy supply co anything that's just the name. Again, we are looking to really hone in on the searcher's intent, which means, you know, in terms of a word that you would want, buy suitcase is probably a little bit better.
maybe that it maybe that even that's too broad to be perfectly honest but i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it i don't want to you know negate everything now, what I also would recommend is go through, add as many of those negative keywords as possible to a list. I've already created one. That is my how-to list. I have 277 of them. That will then let you go back to your product group and actually, um, you know, you'll notice here I want each type that I had. That'll let me go back to the product group and select negative keywords. Um, you can also do that at the ad group level. So if I go to select negative keywords, I have my how to list and just click select all. It'll select all 277 of them here. Um, it appears that I have too many negative keywords. Look at that. Um, hmm. All right. Well, maybe you just got to get rid of a couple. Mm -hmm. Now, um, yeah, I went crazy on the on the keywords. That's for sure. A bet, good way to get to eliminate that is just go back to your product groupings, select your negative keywords from there. It looks like we are. I actually might have already selected them from before, so that would explain why I'd already I already had that. I've already added those. Great. So at that point, I, I recommend a couple different product types um, or a couple different product groups. I should say um, when you look at the different options and again you add them under ad groups create product group um i've i've experimented with all of these the for one i don't i wouldn't go for the most expensive one which is the types you know the travel bag at four dollars um i've had the most success with product lines in the switch the reason being if you think about the price for a switch uh, the big suitcase is 150 bucks, and then the smaller one I think is 70 bucks or 80 bucks. So, on average, the product and the revenue that's going to come in with every sale is going to be higher. So, you look at the historic cost per click; it's only 240. That's even lower than the American Dream, which has pretty low cost backpacks, all things considered. So, if I'm going to go in and put in as much as like a three dollar max cost per click here. And say I do the same thing here, right? If I get one purchase at a for a switch for, uh, that one hundred fifty dollar bag at three dollars, the the art the return on my ad spend is way more here than it is. You know, I got to sell three American Dreams to equal one switch uh, in terms of the money that I'm spending. So that's kind of the thought process behind the cost per click is. You need to understand and think about the pricing of these different products and how the cost per click compares. Um, if you want to play it safe and you want to really look for the lowest here, that's where you go into the types and you can see you got several that are under $2 in terms of historic cost per click. But don't be afraid to push that price up, that max, max cost per click, because shopping ads are um, pretty much the most competitive at this point. And the idea is that whatever that historic cost per click is, you're going to want to go a little bit higher. Now, at that point, you know you want to have a you want to have a bunch of different product groups available. If I go back to my campaigns and say I let's pause that one and go back to my one from before just to show them, um, you know I had a ton of them here. I looked at all sorts of them. Now I'm not going to run all. I wouldn't run all of these. I usually run about you know there's some competing ones. Um, I personally would recommend running at least different, three different product groups, um, that, so, you know, I went with the price, I went with the types, I, I've tried them all. Um, I don't know what is the best other than, uh, the one with the switch, um, the switch product types. Um, but again, the key here is setting a cost per click that is a little bit higher than the historic. Um, not going too high. You want to look for something that is efficient in terms of price. Finally, you want to make sure that your negative keywords are set. When I would go in and look at the results, usually the culprits where I'd see a bunch of clicks but no conversions are search terms like how to blank. Or sometimes it's not even like it's by something like it's B, like BUI. Um, buy it a completely different product. Um, so that's really kind of a, it's a mix and match that you need to figure out is you want to make sure that people are not seeing the wrong thing. Um, 
but that's really about it. You know, that's a quick overview. I don't, um, I would say of the, of all the, of all the different rounds here, this might be the most confusing because it is so much different than display ads and search ads. Um, but remember you are going to need to go in and optimize the previous campaigns that you've done before. And you'll have a chance to optimize this one in the next round. If you need another over, uh, quick overview of just how to mechanically work this, you can watch the two minute understanding shopping ads video. It's pretty helpful. I do recommend that up front. And that's about it. Uh, so I'd love to see, you know, how you hear how you do in this. Um, and, you know, I'll, I look forward to seeing results, but hopefully this is at least a little helpful for you. Uh, round eight is going to be more of the same. And then round nine and 10 are where things get interesting and they try to introduce some real world curveballs, many of which I think are are pretty uh, realistic. So uh, that's all that I have for today. Hopefully this is helpful.